Okay guys, what if I told you there's a tech role that fewer than 10,000 people on the planet are doing right now and they're making between 115 to 180K on average with some pulling in a quarter million dollars. I'm talking about FinOps engineers. If you've never heard of this job, you're not alone. Most people in tech haven't either. But here's the crazy part. Nine out of 10 Fortune 50 companies are actively hiring for this role right now and they can't find enough qualified people. So in this video, I'm breaking down exactly what a FinOps engineer does, why companies are desperate to hire them, what the salary progression looks like, and most importantly, how you can break into this field in the next six to 12 months. Even if you've never heard of FinOps before today, let's dive in. Okay, so who am I? My name is Chris Schwank, AKA The Tech Jobber. I host the Tech Jobber podcast and YouTube channel. So basically all the information I give you is real salary and hourly information from my recruiting business. And all of the tech information is vetted by a tech expert that I actually do business with. So you probably heard of DevOps and you've heard of FinTech, but you probably never heard of FinOps. So what exactly is FinOps? Let's start there. Okay, so as you probably figured out, FinOps stands for Financial Operations. It's basically the practice of bringing financial accountability to the variable spending of cloud computing. You know, it sounds like a lot of corporate nonsense, so let me break down a real example. Okay, so imagine your company moves from AWS to Azure. Suddenly, instead of buying servers once and being done, you're paying for compute, storage, data transfer, and dozens of other services. And the bill changes every single day based on what your engineers are actually doing. Okay, so here's where it gets expensive. A developer spins up a test environment on a Friday afternoon to debug something. Maybe they forget to shut it down over the weekend. By Monday morning, that mistake cost the company 15 grand. Multiply that by 200 engineers across different teams. And you can see how cloud bills spiral totally out of control. In fact, companies waste an average of 30% of their cloud spend. For companies spending $10 million in the cloud a year, $3 million just evaporating. So this is exactly where a FinOps engineer is coming in and saving the day. They're basically the people that track and optimize the cloud costs across the entire organization. They build automation to shut down unused resources so it's not piling up over weekends like the example I gave. Also creating dashboards so teams can see their spending in real time, negotiating cloud providers to get those rates down, and they're educating engineers on cost-efficient architecture. So think of them as financial detectives in the cloud world. Companies are always willing to pay big dollars for someone that can save them millions. That's why that 250K salary is nothing for them. Okay, so let's talk about why this role is blowing up right now. And in my recruiting business, I have seen these slowly come out, really getting hot over the last year. First, I thought it was like, wait, is this DevOps? No, FinOps. Okay, what is this? So basically there's three massive trends that are converging. First, and this is probably the most obvious, the cloud spending has gotten totally out of control. Okay, so Gartner predicts worldwide public cloud spending will hit 679 billion in 2025. That's up from 490 billion in 2022. Companies are spending more on cloud every single year, but most have no idea where that money is actually going. So recently I was trying to recruit a FinOps engineer at a Fortune 500 company. And he told me they found $4.7 million in wasted spend in the first 90 days on the job. And that's basically just by identifying orphan resources and unused reserve capacity. That one hire paid for themselves 40 times over in the first quarter. Okay, the second trend would be economic pressure. We have interest rates up and tech companies cutting costs everywhere. CFOs are finally asking the question, why is our AWS bill $2 million a month? For years when that money was cheap, nobody cared. Now every dollar matters and FinOps engineers are the people who can answer that question and fix it. Third trend is the skill gap is massive here. Here's the thing, FinOps requires a unique combination of skills. You need to understand cloud architecture with its AWS, Azure, GCP. Also need financial acumen to analyze the spending patterns. So it's not just technical, but then again, you also need coding skills to build out the automations so you're not overspending and you have to be able to communicate to high level stakeholders exactly where this money is going and how you can save. Now, most people are really strong in one of these areas, but finding someone that can do them all, that's why there are fewer than 10,000 FinOps professionals worldwide. While companies are paying premium salaries to attract them. The FinOps Foundation, which is the official certifying body, says demand is growing 300% year over year and supply is really not keeping up. That's what I like to show on this channel. It's where we have a supply and demand totally out of whack for high paying jobs. Okay, so let's talk about money. That's probably why you clicked on this video. So entry level FinOps analysts, 
They're coming in at about 85 to 115. Basically, people with no experience, but they typically someone from a cloud engineering or financial analyst background. You're doing a lot of reporting, creating dashboards, identifying the low hanging fruit for the cost savings. You're coming in to slash that bill. Companies hiring this level are basically mid sized tech companies and startups that just hit Series B or C funding. Then, right at the mid level, once you get your feet wet, we're looking at 115 to 150K. This level, you're building automation, implementing tagging strategies, setting up cost allocation models. You're the person actually doing the optimization work. You might save your company 500K to $2 million annually. The companies hiring are obviously all the enterprise tech companies, also financial services and healthcare. The cloud bills are all out of control and that's why they're bringing in FinOps now. So at the senior level, these guys are getting 150 to 200 easy. Basically, you're leading the FinOps initiatives across multiple cloud platforms. A lot of the big boys use not just AWS, but they use AWS and Azure as well. So you're managing a small team, maybe presenting directly to the VPs and the C-suites. That's why the communication piece is very important here. You're actually setting the strategy, not just executing it. The companies hiring for this are pretty much all the Fortune 500s and major cloud native companies. Then we have the big boys. These are very rare, but I do see them. This is the top of the ladder. This is the FinOps architect or principal. Basically, these are coming in at 200, bare minimum up to 280K. Obviously, you're gonna get some goodies on top of that, maybe stock options, bonus, stuff like that. But salary will be 280K maybe up to 300 i have seen that as well so at this level you're designing enterprise-wide finops programs negotiating multi-million dollar contracts with aws and azure potentially managing a team of five to ten people and at this level you're expected to save your company between 10 to 20 million dollars so basically the companies hiring at this level are the really big boys google amazon a lot of the fangs microsoft and then obviously major financial institutions so a real example, I've seen it in my recruitment business. I found a job posting for a major bank that was hiring for a senior FinOps engineer. Basically the base was 175K, 20% bonus, plus equity on top of that. So total comp 220K plus the equity, and basically the job description just required three years of cloud experience and a FinOps cert preferred. That's it. No comp sci, no 10 years, uh, no lead experience at a competitor. Basically, you just have to know some FinOps. Now compare that to a generic DevOps engineer role at the same company, which has the 130K base, maybe the 20% bonus. You're looking at a major difference for, you know, probably wild experience difference as well. Okay, so let's get into the day-to-day. -day. What exactly do FinOps engineers do every day? Because optimizing cloud costs sounds pretty big. Okay, so. Basically a typical morning, you're gonna come in, you're gonna start checking the dashboards for cost spikes. Did someone accidentally leave a massive compute cluster running overnight? Is there a sudden spike in data transfer costs? You're basically the early warning system to say, wait a minute, what's going on here? Okay, then mid morning, now you're building out some automations. So let's say you notice that developers consistently forget to shut down dev environments on weekends. You write a Python script that automatically shuts down non-production resources after six on Fridays and spins them back up Monday morning. That one script might save 50K a year. Okay, then midday, maybe you're analyzing some patterns, realize the company could save 40% on certain workloads by purchasing reserved instances instead of paying on demand rates. So you build the business case, present to finance and implement it. Okay, the afternoon might be some team education. Maybe you run a workshop teaching developers how to spot instances for batch jobs instead of on-demand instances. You show them how to right-size their EC2 instances and you're not just fixing problems, you are preventing them in this case. Okay, maybe by late afternoon before you leave, you're creating executive dashboards showing cloud spend by team, by project, and by environment. You identify which teams are over budget and work with them on optimizing those cost strategies to bring them down. Okay, typical tools you'll be using on a daily basis. Well, there's AWS Cost Explorer and there's Azure Cost Management as far as your kind of uh, cloud provider cost control tools. Then you have FinOps platforms. You have Cloud Health, Cloudability, Aptio. I see that a lot on job descriptions as well. As far as programming languages, we have Python, SQL, and that's to basically write the scripts and do the data analysis. As far as your dashboarding tools, a lot of these jobs require Tableau or Grafana and then your collaboration, you're using Slack or Jira. So it's an interesting job because you're not just sitting there staring at spreadsheets on what costs what, you're actually writing some code, you're architecting solutions, and you're directly impacting the company's bottom line in a very measurable way. You can see exactly how much you save them year over year or quarter by quarter. Okay, and if you're still with us, you're probably saying, that sounds great. How do I become a FinOps engineer? 
Okay, so let's go through a basic roadmap. Step one, you need the cloud fundamentals. That's like one to two months. But in those cloud fundamentals, you're going to have to understand how cloud pricing works. Take the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification or Azure Fundamentals. These are entry level certs you can get in two to four weeks and they'll cost you a hundred bucks. Okay, now step two, you're gonna become a FinOps Certified Practitioner. Basically, this is the certification for FinOps. It's offered by the FinOps Foundation and it covers FinOps framework, cost optimization strategies, and best practices. The exam is only 300 bucks. And you can see what you earn once you get that. So you study it in three to four weeks and basically just using free training manuals. Step three, you're gonna need some basic scripting. As I said about that Python script that saved 50K, you're gonna need some of that. Basically, you don't have to be a software engineer, but you do need to automate things. Basically learn the Python basics, enough to write scripts and interact with cloud APIs. And basically you can get some free resources, Python for everyone on Coursera, automate the boring stuff with Python. There's actually like Python mini scrolling games I see on Instagram all the time. So just get some Python basics, enough to write some basic scripts. That's about all you'll need. Okay, step four, you're gonna to wanna to build a portfolio project and basically set up a free tier AWS account, deploy a simple application, then create a cost optimization report showing how you'd reduce spend by 30%. Basically document everything in your GitHub repo, and this proves you can actually do a FinOps job. Okay, from there, you have all the skills, you have a portfolio project, now let's get to applying. And basically you wanna to apply to any company with $5 million in annual cloud spend, and Pretty much any tech companies that are cloud native you know so all the big boys also a very easy sell is to financial services companies because they loved cost optimization and they don't understand the cloud they just see a big bill so you can come in and show the savings and get hired with them as well once you become a certified finops practitioner you can go to the finops foundation and see who hires these guys and basically just start contacting people right there okay one alternative path is if you're already working at a company with significant cloud spend, propose starting a FinOps initiative. Basically go to the head of cloud architecture or even the CFO and say, I want to become a FinOps champion. It's just 20% of your time initially. You're building out real experience. You can add to your LinkedIn and resume to get a much better FinOps job at another company that doesn't have this. So pretty much for a couple hundred bucks, you can get all the skills necessary and start earning those 200, 250, 280K jobs. Here's why now is the exact time that you should look into getting into FinOps. Basically the FinOps Foundation has 12,000 members up from 2000, three years ago. So major companies, Netflix, Spotify, Adobe have dedicated FinOps teams. AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud are all building native FinOps tools in their platforms. But here's the key, we're still in the early adopter phase. Most companies haven't even heard of FinOps yet. That means if you get in now, you'll be one of the first 20,000 people on the planet doing this job. You have your pick of opportunities with the biggest companies in the world that are giving out big stock options and equity. And so what happens when the biggest companies in the world do something? Well, five years later, everyone else follows. So five years from now, every company with cloud infrastructure will have a dedicated FinOps team for the people who got in early, who became FinOps certified when there were only 10,000 practitioners worldwide, those people will be leading the teams with the quarter million to half a million dollar salaries. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. If this video got you interested in FinOps, drop a comment below saying FinOps and tell me where you're at in your career. Are you in DevOps, are you in cloud, are you in finance? I read every comment and I'll give you personalized advice on your path in FinOps. And if you want more videos on high paying tech roles that nobody's talking about, where the supply and demand is totally out of whack like this, hit the subscribe button. I've got a whole series coming of these hidden goldmine careers. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.